Welcome back, guys. Just Mike here. Anyway, I've been ordering on the Goodwill.com auction site or whatever, and not once have I seen them not pack a cuckoo clock or any clock for that matter not well enough. They really protect them so that uh, you'll get it all in one piece. Possibly even if they use it as a basketball, it still will come out great. Let me give you a quick look at this box and the packing they used. This is a big box and they have some machine I guess that does chops up cardboard and makes it good packing and down below are peanuts. Like I say, I'm amazed. Anyway, besides all that packing, they tape all this on a bubble wrap and they really protect it just alone in this. So I'm really amazed. And to show you what I got, it's a eight day clock. Obviously it needs to be dusted and cleaned up. It needs dusted and cleaned up. It's a pretty big clock. Just to give a quick reference, without the horns, it's not set on the right, but per se, we have a 20 inch clock here. Like I say, it's really dirty. This one did come with two pendulums, which obviously this is the one that belongs here because of the leaf. It's still the oak leaf. This here just happens to be a bonus. I can clean up and stick on another clock because you don't always get the pendulums. And the bird does have an eye and the rabbit does have an eye, a glass eye. I think this is an older clock, possibly by looking at those nuts on here, which uh, you can still get them, but you're going to pay an arm or a leg. And normally they come in a set of six nuts, uh, double nuts, and the cr I think the crown comes with it, the crown nut. And this one here is missing the horn. And let's just take a look at, at the inside. Isn't that nice? This is a big clock, like I say. So let me get rid of this plastic wrap and we'll go from there. Here again, here's the weights. Yeah, mercy, it's heavy. Look how big them babies are. Uh, don't see a weight on here, but I'm quite certain they're over two pounds a piece. More peanuts. <laughs> as much as I hate peanuts, they work well in packing. So let's take this chain and try to get it set aside. See, this is a real dusty, looks like it's out in a wood shop or something. It, it's just covered with whatever. says West Germany. Normally when it says West on the Germany, they're not that old of a clock. This has got bug leaves and everything else in it. Not sure what this tape is on here for. Uh, it's getting pretty close to hitting, so I'll probably adjust this spring so it's further away from the board so it doesn't bang on the board and make that nasty sound. You want a decent gong. Uh, we got some chains strung up in here. Fell off and through the leaves or through the works. Thank gosh it came out. The works didn't look that bad on here. They actually look pretty clean. It's just that maybe they just stopped using the clock. These would have been nice. I show how to make these things to hold your bellows closed when you store it. Uh, some people don't even maybe care about that part. Close your bellows. 
put it on there and that's going to save your bellow from getting stuck open and then not wanting to close all the way. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart mainly so I can get this thing cleaned out. But it does have nice long bellows so it should have a nice deep deeper tone instead of the Tweety Bird tone. Give a quick measurement of the whistle box itself which I'd say it's approximately four and a half inches. And just showing you the back side, we're at 11 inches by 7 inches. So that's a fairly nice uh, area to be able to work in and get your fat fingers in there and do something about this. So I think what I'm going to do first, I'm not even going to see if this thing runs or cuckoos or anything. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and start taking it apart so I can clean it. And the first thing I plan on doing is undoing the bird, taking the hands off, uh, take everything apart, and I'm going to take a brush to this thing, wipe it down, so I can kind of see better what I have in here. So, just so happens, I accidentally ordered too big of a horn for my one clock. I think this one's going to fit just fine for this size of a clock. And of course it comes with the mouthpiece too that goes in here. And this is a little bit too big to fit that hole. I'll probably get that hole built out a little bit further so it'll fit. And hopefully this uh, natural color, even though it's stained, once I get this cleaned up it might even match. First thing I'm going to do is take out the whistle boxes which is just a simple screw here on the end and there's a nail to hold it into place. Now when you're taking these out you want to pay attention to the wires. It just so happens I can see right now this one has a longer wire than this one does. And when you go to put them on you'll find that out pretty quick because uh, the bellows will try to open too far and a lot of these clocks don't like the idea of opening too far because then they start binding up in here for some reason. There's spider webs and everything else in here. I already got the lock on there. The good thing about putting this uh, wire lock on here right now is to make it so this clock is probably setting with the bellows open. This is going to help get them back down into place again. Well, let me show you these hands. To me this here is what I call the old school ones. Let's get a closer view here. So what normally goes on is this nut. It's a square hole that just drops straight on. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has a, a ridge around the square hole. That's meant to get the minute hand to be centered so it doesn't move around. Then you have this washer here that sets on after the minute hand is put on. Then you have this nut here that squishes the washer down to that to hold it into place. I also forgot to mention you want your chains out of here. Some places recommend to hold on to each side of the chain and give it a twist. That's probably easy. I go ahead and just pop it open if the chain's not too thick so I can get it released. And then what you want to do is you want to pull your chains totally out and there's a good chance you might want to clean these things because they do have a slight bit of rust on them or if they're not that bad, maybe you want to use a little bit of clock oil run on them so they drop smoothly instead of trying to tangle up as they're going up the inside of the clock. But these are kind of a tangled up mess because of shipping right now. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's get a closer shot of all this dust that's on, on here. 
This is kind of normal. This here's got a little bit of water moisture damage, we'll say, on here. It's not going to affect it, but I, you can see it's on there. But this is just filthy from setting this way a lot, not necessarily this way a lot. So I'm willing to bet you anything this clock still ran when they took it off the wall. And let's see the bird. His mouth opens. So that's a nice feature there. Um, this is a regular uh, GM 34 made in Germany it's got the numbers actually don't mean anything to me although I think I have a sheet that might give you a, a little bit of an idea let's get a closer look here in the camera so maybe you can see what it says on there. Yeah, the numbers there. One six four nine zero zero zero. One six. Seven four five three nine. This on this side. So, oh, I do believe it's a one seven zero four zero seven five, and then a one seven zero five two nine four. So far, this clock looks like it works. Of course, my finger is not good for as an eight day, but it is running around. I'm still going to clean it, that's for sure. And the timepiece, I already took the pendulum stem off of there. Let's see here. So, cheating a little bit, it actually doesn't tick bad either. So there's a chance I could oil this clock up and throw it back up on the wall and it'll do just fine. But it means I got this far, why not clean it, refresh it, make it all new again. So I don't, realistically, I don't think this, this works as an old works. Uh, to me, this shaft here where the hand fits on looks small. In which I'm going to say when you see people selling expensive hands on eBay, excuse me, they call this the 30 hour shaft. If I needed hands that just barely fit, the hour hand just barely fit over the shaft, I can't buy hands, new hands that will work on here. But the other hands will slide all the way down, but still be, let's call it snug, but not that snug. You can take that hand, such as this dirty thing, let's turn it over, it's cleaner. You can take and put super glue in the hole, and what you're doing is you're adding a layer of filler on the inside. Let that thing dry good, and once it's dried good, try it on, your, on the shaft of the movement. If it doesn't work, put another layer on there. You're building it up the center to shrink it in order for it to sit down and I'm talking about your new hands that won't fit all the way okay it might not look like it but I gave it a good quick brushing with a paintbrush got it all wiped down the best I could I would actually like to take off the frame of this clock so I can get down in there and get this cleaned up good uh, and then I'm thinking about just wiping it down to the warm rag to, to get some of this stuff off. There's some stuff that I can almost scratch off. I like this thing to be cleaned up as good as possible and then I'm not going to really do anything to it except uh, put a wax over everything to bring it back to uh, we'll say a, a decent shine and it won't be a gloss shine because that's not what you're looking for. A decent look as if it was brand new again. So let me get this thing looked at. 
This here has these on it to hold it into place and there should be a wire that holds this. I don't see a wire on the back. I see where there was a nail that had a wire and I might go ahead and uh, make another one for that to hook up in because that just keeps it from falling off from any vibrations such as when it cuckoos or when it gongs in time it might come loose uh, winding it especially being an eight day it might come loose so it's nice to get that wire back on there so let me get around to seeing if I can get this off if I can then I can remove because there's a screw on the back side I can remove the bird and the rabbit and get cleaned up in behind him them and also be able to go ahead and get these waxed before I put them back on so let me see what it's going to take to get this off. Normally you have two nails here and two in the top. Let me set this aside. Yeah, there's a, one nail right there and one nail right there. So those are the ones I got to take off and pop this thing up. That should come off pretty easily. Just the same. You be very careful because this could be maybe just too dried out. And when you're trying to move this thing off sometimes you can break it compared to if it fell off the wall what it would look like so let me get to this and I'll let you know what I ended up doing holding this frame on if you look on the inside of the clock you can normally see the nail sticking up now you need to move the animal over to the side so you don't drill it into him and I got the bird moved over I already got that one in you can take a fat ended screwdriver or if you have a some kind of a punch we'll say the flat end so you can take that nail and drive it through now see here you go you got your two nails here so now you can just pull them out let's try it this way Yep, twisting and pulling. Worked out pretty good. Okay, now it's all free down here. So now I have to carefully wiggle it back and forth and get it to release up here, which sometimes you need a little bit of help see where the nail is line up to it and give the screwdriver a little bit of a twist if you can slide it in there be careful not to damage this if there's not a hole in it yet for it Sometimes you can loosen them enough. If you're lucky, you can push them back up and the nail will pop up. So you can grab a hold of it and start pulling upward to get this thing out of here. Less stress on that frame, the better. My dice, I can kind of grab it and rock it up. four of these nails look like they're the same size which is good to kind of pay attention to that too so you're not forcing into where you sh maybe shouldn't be now I'm holding the frame too so I did not fall on the floor so there we go look how nasty that thing is underneath here and here 
you have the screws that you can undo, loosen, take off whatever so you can get the animals off here so you can get a better job of cleaning. But this frame is in pretty good sh shape besides being filthy. No cracks, broken places or anything. So let me get the animals taken off so I can suit this up better and also get this thing cleaned Finish up. On it. But just saying, I don't necessarily want to soak it down. I just want to get the, I'm going to call it food. I don't know what's on this. Let's say it hadn't been taken care of, it's just thrown out in the garage. And it does have some something on here in which possibly the wax would take care of a lot of it. Yeah, that's better. We're just giving it a quick wipe down. I already dusted off the paintbrush. So after I'm done doing this, and after it dries off a little bit better, then I'll go ahead and get this thing waxed up and we'll see just what it looks like. But just a little bit of moisture I'm putting on right now, wiping it down, It actually looks pretty good. I mean, yes, for the collector, you think to yourself, it's almost a shame to see clocks go like this. But the deal is, is people get the clocks and they don't plan on being a professional or even close to it when they buy the clock. And they don't realize how much maintenance this clock requires because it's open to the atmosphere and so when their clock stops working they either don't want to take it in don't know they can take it in don't have a place to take it in at and they so when it quits working they just throw it outside in the garage and not be concerned with it and then eventually they take it to a thrift shop like Goodwill, if they don't know anything about or don't want to deal with eBay. Because sometimes dealing with the customers on eBay, when you're dealing with public, oh lordy, sometimes. My opinion only, I guess. Okay, that looks good enough for who it's for. <laughs> Say after this dries off good, I'll go ahead and uh, get it a good wax job on it. This here eyes only thing I I like to dust dust off good. I'll go ahead and wipe them all down. Means I got a couple rags here that are wet. But like I say, I don't want these things soaked. I want the wax to soak into them. Not funny how that bird's got a teeny eye. Of course, birds do have teeny eyes compared to a rabbit. You notice a nice detail. Of course, it's a big clock, but you get a lot more detail because it's bigger and you can see it. And the more the clock is carved, the more valuable it is, such as a hunter. clock you have the rabbit the bird the leaves the pouch and then of course your crown's got, got the deer head and the leaves oh and I'll, I'll mention on here let me show it to you besides the rifles what's making this clock a little more valuable you got the leaves down here and then you also have them up here on your let's call it the cheaper ones They'll have the leaves down here, but they won't have the leaves up towards the top. So on here, the only thing I can do is I can take this deer head off by the screw in the back. Normally, I don't like taking these guns off. There's a chance I might, I'll, I'll look at it, but I just soon not mess with them. But it'd be, excuse me, it would be nice so I can get clear in there and get a good wax job on this clock. Because I'm sure it hadn't had anything since the clock was born, we'll put it that way. 
Now you notice, and you can see there, now I've already rubbed a little bit, just my finger, how filthy that eye is. It just caked with dust from hanging, I'm going to guess. So just cleaning it with a little bit of moist rag. I don't know if you can see that or not. Look how much better that looks compared to that. There's a dirty eye. There's a clean eye. It's really caked on the top of his eye. And that's another thing too. It depends on how dusty your house is of how long between cleanings or oilings you have to do. The cleaner your house is, we'll say, the less you're going to have to have your clock oiled, cleaned and oiled. Also, if you can, keep it away from the kitchen because it will suck up the greases and oils from cooking. I went in, did it, I got it off of there very carefully I've had to really watch I should brush this off first because it's got so much dust it's amazing where the dust gets hung up at that you can never get to and yes I knew this here oak leaf is broke right there but believe it or not you probably won't even see it when it's hanging on the wall because you're not examining the clock. You just happen to, for a person coming into your house, they're coming in, they see your clock and hear your clock and think that's cool, but they're not there to examine your clock. They're there to visit with you. So in so many words, if you want that to bother you, fine. Uh, if you're buying this, just the crown piece itself, maybe you want it perfect and so you have to decide whether that price is a good price to you. Now what I've found, especially when you come to these larger ones, uh, they're hard to come by, the oak leaf ones. Those regular leaf ones, I don't know what kind of leaf that is, it's on a cuckoo clock. But those you can get for, I never mean to say reasonable but you can you, you can get easily get them usually but these oak leaf ones especially with the four oak leaves that is so hard to come by at least that's what I found uh, looked on eBay and you can order brand new ones but good lord you might as well buy a brand new clock for the price they want for them I mean I almost feel that way looked on eBay for as much as they want for some parts because people there are some people out there you'll you'll see them they have a tray they got the parts setting on they uh buy the cuckoo clocks because you can make money at it they buy them full tear them apart and sell them piece by piece for the people that are trying to get their clocks back together and i haven't found myself that i can do that you got the guns to deal with now. Not too much to them. The, the back is so raw. It's no smooth to it or nothing. It's never meant to be taken off like this. They're there for decoration. And once you get this thing waxed up, they'll go from this awful look to nice looking. This is, like I say, a good way to get rid of a lot of the dust. Be able to get a good wax job on your clock again. Because they, they're hanging there. They do dry out. Now you see, this has got chipped down here on the gun. But you don't even notice it when it's hanging. And once you wax it, that'll actually disappear. If you happen to have the piece, which obviously I don't because it was donated. donated and if they donated it, if it wasn't put in or taped to the clock they're just going to throw it away as like dirt because Goodwill does end up with a lot of dirty stuff coming in too okay I waxed the gun this gun I haven't done it yet I don't know if you can tell a difference it's obviously dark darker to me 
and of course has a, almost a new look to it went ahead and waxed half the deer look at that eye shine need to get in there still in the ears I, I'll probably use a screwdriver with the rag to get it in there better and I tried not to wax this side here and there's just a little bit deeper richer tone of what I see it's nighttime so it's kind of hard to maybe see on the camera and his eyes still pretty dirty looking where the wax will help take some of that stuff off then on this here I wax this half of it and it darkened it up besides cleaned it up I made sure to get the wax on the edges real good because that's where it'll soak in good wax this half of it on the back side this half I haven't done anything to it yet I haven't done anything to this side yet but you can see possibly how richer this looks compared to this is just kind of dried out and losing its grain look to it so I'll go ahead and finish waxing this and get to the animals and the crown the rest of the or the frame the rest of it and see how that turns out so again here we go the bird is wax the rabbit is not so let me get that done I'll get this done and I'll be right back yeah I'm using the Howard's feeding wax I'm not sure if that's the same thing they have over at uh, Home Depot it looks like the same bottle and everything else but I don't remember if it had uh, Howard on it but this here I was able to order online great stuff kind of big for my table but here it is put together got the horn redrilled to fit the horn size that went in there everything looks great so I guess I'll take care of the case and then get this on there so here it is put back together I don't have the clockworks in yet and I don't have the horns on is that to go get them out of the room but here it's all back together again let me go ahead and get the works in and get the horns on and it's dark right now so I'll probably wait till tomorrow morning to get this thing up on the wall and running again this here measures from the horn down to here two feet I got this clock cheap enough I will admit but it was filthy and there's going to be it's an eight day also and I use my hand for size how big this clock is it's not humongous but it's a little bigger than those other ones and has bigger head horn everything <laughs> 